Hey guys, welcome back, and it may look like I've tried this one. I really haven't. Um, here we are. Lieutenant Kang rolled his eyes and stood up, stood up, stood back up by himself. Then he got dressed and left the locker room. I rose and stood there like a statue. If I didn't reach out and grab him sooner. No, no, no. I should have gone and picked up that soap. Oh boy. Has my career over? The bee slipped on the water, turned his side and suddenly he was like he was drunk. Daddy jumped ahead just in time and the beast missed him. Lucky! The beast ran into the rails not too far ahead and finally stopped on grass. Soon a human walked out of a beast. He seemed to be okay but just started yelling while checking the beast's round feet. The beast's body has some words on it. I couldn't read it. I see a sign next to it. We used to go hunting birds at Daddy, a place far away. It's deep inside the mountains. On top of the hill was a building that smelt like drugs. Daddy told me it was a hospital. Same sign as the one of a beast. I remember thinking the hospital looked like it was a little strange. The inside didn't look hurt at all to me, but none of them would smile. Someone would burst into laughter and tears all of a sudden. It looked a little strange. Not like humans who men in a city. Humans are so strange. Okay, so apparently he got a rank S, but he only got a rank B. So. Let's retry that. Let's try that order. Nope. No change there. No change there. Still ain't beat. I prefer the um, soap over there. He's in Kang, rolled his eyes at me, stood back by himself. Then got dressed and left the locker room. Frozen stood there like a statue. Did I just do something I shouldn't have done? No, 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 no. Or did I just forget something that I should have done? Oh god, I have no idea which one it was. Oh boy. Is my career over? Let's try that. I'm afraid of a beast having to step on some soap. The beast only turned its side like it was drunk. Daddy jumped ahead just in time, a beast missed us. Lucky! The beast continued to charge ahead like a snake. Since the ground was so slippy, it tilted one side and slid ahead very fast. When well, it stopped after it hit a lamp pole and near crossing, so mean he could fly over the front of the beast and smash it to the ground. It was lying there, not moving at all. The kid had yellow hair it reminded me of a few foreign humans who used to live nearby. It was too far away, I couldn't see his face. I could only see the blood spilling beneath him. More and more people started to gather around. Daddy shook up a rain home and quietly said to me, Spotty, if I'd have been hit, we humans wouldn't care at all. I'm on board, I was still in shock. Daddy led me away from the accident and continued down the street. Pulled the Tilling Kang up from the floor. Well, shall I say something? Did that hurt Lieutenant Kang? That didn't sound appropriate. Still fingering, Kang swept away my hand. He almost something and turned back to his lock and got dressed as if nothing happened. Went back to my lock in silence too. What did Lieutenant just say? See his face all red, maybe because of the heat. Perhaps he was saying something like, Shit, it's so fucking hot in here. So you both got rank A's now. Perfect. So the kid died. Soap. Oh. I 
I think they caught a glance at the tank. Kang on us taking my clothes off in my locker. Wow, his body's real top notch. It's still wet, and drops of water are streaming down his skin. For any woman in the world, I was sure Lieutenant Kang's hotness must be off a chart. Didn't know what got into me, but reached out and grabbed his arm. Um, I'm glad it stops where it does. Lieutenant stopped wiping his body, looked back, and noticed me staring at him. He seemed to be asking me his look. What are you doing? What was I doing? I, um... Strange enough, I had no idea what I was doing either. I can't believe I was getting more awkward when yeah, early in the spa room. A complete disaster. I just let go of him immediately before he went even further. Before I could move, Lieutenant Kang reached out with his hand and grabbed my arm. I didn't know you were to. Let me take you to a great place. After I was at the station, Lieutenant Kang took me to the spa. I never would have guessed that after a day. The relationship between Lieutenant Kang and I would turn into something completely unexpected. Rank. Z? Okay. Um. It's not exactly, um. So you need to say something. There's actually another S, it seems. That's both rank A. Round Peter, a beast happened to step on some soap. The beast suddenly turned aside like he was drunk. Then he jumped his head in just in time. The beast was running to the rails not far ahead. Soon a human walked out of the beast. He seemed to be okay. He started yelling while checking out his big round feet. Looked at the beast. His body had some words on it. Couldn't read it. Should go hunting birds with Daddy. Place far away. It was a hospital. We talked about it earlier. Never been with hospitals happy. Everybody's sad. No idea why. I'm quite mad about hospital. Maybe it was Luna, uh, an insane asylum. Humans are strange. Have you got another S? You got the two S's. You got an A. So basically, I should be able to rearrange rows. Try that. You now got a rank S. Oh, got a new um right hand side. I grabbed Lieutenant Kang and tried to pull him up, but I slipped and fell too. We had to go back to a hot tub, take a bath to clean ourselves. Water's still very warm, but I was already used to temperature for the first time. He was wrapped his towel around his neck again. He didn't close his eyes this time though; just seemed to stare blankly ahead. There's only two of us in the spa room. It's so quiet again. Everything else was in the air except for the steam from water and awkwardness. Maybe it was my imagination, but he almost looked like a normal, accessible person for a while. I was almost going to ask him something, but eventually I decided to just let it go. It was you after work. Maybe I shouldn't talk about it. Hey, you got double S. That's what I was aiming for. This is across the board. Carlos, te extraño. Carlos, I miss you so much. A cargo shorts and a beach shirt. So it looks like the next one we have is between Alicia, who we don't really know too much about yet, and Chang Yong Min. Okay. A noble stray cat from Korea.
Go back. And let's try this one. Alicia and Chiang Min. Little Lamb Billy and my cargo shorts and a beach shirt. Hong Kong was a strange city. It's quite small, but probably like such a big city. While it was busy and rich, there was also many poor people, including numerous homeless people, who were just wandering the streets. I had hoped to go to America, but I had ended up being kidnapped and brought to Hong Kong. I didn't have any more money on me. I didn't know if I could ever survive here, not to mention go to America. I began to look at the hiring flyers on the walls. Teamsters, engineers, masseurs. A lot of places were hiring, but I didn't know how to do any of the jobs. One day I saw it was a nightclub looking for a pub singer. The club was, club was called Melody Hall. It sat in the middle of the most popular location on Portland Street in Mongkok. The club was huge and the guests were all dressed like royalty. Everyone that came to an audition for a job was sitting in the lobby waiting for their turn. Several middle aged men were sitting on the lower stage looking terribly bored. I chose to sing one of my favourite songs when it was my turn. It was a folk song from my hometown called Little Lamb Billy. After my parents had passed away, my brother and I were soon sent to an orphanage. For a long time after, Carla sent, seemed to have shut down entirely. He could sit there for an entire day without saying a single word. He was only three. There was nothing near the orphanage but hills and mountains. I liked to take him hiking and would talk to him on top of a mountain or sing to him. We would stay there for a whole day sometimes. However, he still wasn't talking. One day when I was singing, I suddenly thought to myself, was this going to last forever? Would Carlos never ever talk to me again? I had to stop the song. I couldn't stop myself from thinking depressed thoughts. I cried. Why are you crying, Alicia? Carlos was pulling on my arm. I saw him looking up to me with his clear eyes. That day, he'd finally returned to me. The song I'd been singing that day was Little Lamb Billy. I stood in front of the elevator. I was thinking about the song I'd just sang and the days we had lived in the orphanage. I couldn't help but hum a song again. I felt a sudden tap on my shoulder. It was one of the men who had been sitting below the stage earlier. Miss, there's something you should know. His eyes were almost as shut as he smiled at me. It's quite a hassle to fire a foreigner like you as no papers. You wouldn't be able to find another jo in our job in all of Hong Kong. However, I think you're really terrific. I'd love to hire you so long as you... As he was speaking, his hand was moving further down from my shoulder, along my back. He kept moving down even further. I was taken aback and tried to move away, but he grabbed my wrist. I'd never been in a situation like this in my life. I was horrified. I tried to shake him off with all my strength. I scratched his face with my nails, leaving a red mark. His face felt... He felt his face with a hand as I was running away. You ungrateful little bitch! You people! Go grab her! I went into a small alley and hid behind a dumpster. After what seemed to be an eternity, I could no longer hear the people who were running after me. I fell to the ground. I felt violated and ashamed. Tears were running, rushing out my eyes as if all my suffering had come back to haunt me. Carlos, I miss you so much. I've been assigned here for a week. For the past few days, I've been trying to find an opportunity to write my transfer application and submit it to Lieutenant Kang. Yet every time when I sat down and tried to fill out my form, he would throw a bunch of paperwork at me and just file them. It was almost like he knew what I was up to. None of this made any sense at all. As a police officer, shouldn't I be patrolling the city to stop crimes and helping people with everything I had? Even, even to be ready to sacrifice myself for justice at a moment's notice? That's so boring. And God, I can still sometimes chat with Officer Min Jun, a more senior officer in Unit 4. Would have exploded out of boredom by now. You at this point, Min Jun would say. I'll end with a grenade then. Min Jun liked making these kind of morbid firearm jokes. I went around and found them funny. Life sucked. I poured myself another glass and chugged it. I was at a bar called Crash. I would always come when, watching, when I was feeling down. Every day after midnight, the bar would turn into a carnival. Around sunset, the atmosphere here was actually real nice, and it was the best time to come here and drink alone. I sat by the window and staring at the street blankly. Some words from conversation at the next table suddenly caught my attention. A bald man in a Hawaiian shirt raised his bottle and said, Bro, you heard about what happened to a group gang and food days ago? 
His buddy was wearing a pair of beach shorts and supporting the most ridiculous hairstyle and laughed. Of course, it's all a bit over a group young son. It's really not rude of him to throw off half a head of a Choyo Hanson. Only Kang Beg Ya has the balls to do that. May has perked up when I heard Lieutenant Kang name out with blue like that. The old man continued. I think it's pretty rad. A bastard was always so fucking annoying. Come out, come out to our turf all the time, looking for trouble. Just his good old daddy. Crazy head guy interrupted him. Shut the fuck, you idiot. Don't let anyone hear you say that. You can get go off due into trouble. A barman immediately concurred. Sure, sure. By the way, I also heard that a show your hand setting up a trap for Kang back here. It's going to be epic. <laughs> the crazy head guy sounded surprised. Hey, watch it. Don't get so close to me. What do you mean by setting up a trap? The barman explained. Head red swing on Kang back here. And I use it to force him to turn himself over. You can guess what we're going to do to him next. I think it's supposed to be going down tonight. It's by the warehouse, by the port. The crazy haired guy didn't seem like he was buying it. Really? You think that would work? Kang was tough enough to take out a whole team on his own. The barman got excited. We'll find out. Apparently, we've prepared barrels and concrete. I was thinking about uh, some other big surprise. Anyway, no matter which side loses, our boss Joe will be happy either way. Best he's even been looking forward to this day for a long time. I'm sober, not completely. I'll quickly check my cell phone. It's 9 p.m. Now, what I thought about, we got a delivery earlier today. I need left the office soon afterwards. Did the delivery have anything to do with a trap? I knew I wouldn't get quite a with Lieutenant Kang. But no matter what, he was on the side of justice. Now I knew he was in danger, there was no way I could just sit aside and let it happen. I sneaked into the bathroom and immediately called the lieutenant. Nobody picked up. I then called the police station. Someone told me nobody from Unit 4 was available. I had a bad feeling. If we're going to get to the lieutenant as soon as possible, the door opened and a person walked out. My reaction had been slow because of the alcohol. The young man had just come out of the door, grabbed me by my hair and slammed me into a mirror and sinks. The mirror smashed, there was a broken glass all over the ground. As poor I passed out, I heard someone say, Dirty cup. Kind of snitch on our turf. Screw you. When I woke up, I found myself lying in a big, empty warehouse. The gate was locked from the outside. I could see the evening stars through windows high above a wall. Oh, how long have been out for? Was Lieutenant Kang going to report? Oh, that's not very good. Uh, let's do these next time, shall we? Until then, bye bye.